Howdy folks and welcome to 15 Nautical Mile Arc. We have a quick one for you today with a 15 minute flight time. We're in Long Beach, California. And we're going to fly over to Catalina Island. So we're at Dottery Field, Kilo Lima Golf Bravo, and we're going to fly to Catalina, Kilo Alpha Victor X-Ray. And um, weather is mostly clear, except there's only a 5.2 mile visibility right now. So that should make things interesting. If you're wondering where we are on the airport, that is 25 left in front of us, which we're going to use to take off since the winds are coming from the west-northwest. And the hangars for the airport are over there in the background in the haze. And then the terminal would be over there. And so on, so on. And there we have our Boeing friend getting ready to take off, just like in the previous video. And then downtown Los Angeles would be in that direction, which we can't even see from here. And that is where we are and what we're going to do. Now this plane, this Twin Otter, has not been updated yet for X-Plane 11. This is still the same version I was using in X-Plane 10. And I'm noticing a few quirky things, like the interior lights won't turn on for me anymore. I used to simply come up here for external battery and DC master and turn on the general entrance lights, and then our lights would come on. But they're not. So... Not sure what's going on there. But anyway, everybody's boarded up and ready to go. We already adjust our fuel for a one hour flight time, even though it's only a 15 minute flight time. And we're just gonna make this a quick one. So we're gonna get this thing going and then it will be story time today. I do have some Long Beach and Los Angeles stories to tell you. And that is the way we will take care of this. So, all right, here we go. Now my presets keep resetting for some reason, so I have to keep making all these changes. All right, so what do we do first? We're on external power, fuel's been set, my beacon lighting is on, I think, so people know we're there. Where is it, feed set, no smoking fast, people are already on, position, we are kind of on the taxiway, sort of, so we're gonna turn all that stuff on now. And what comes next? Let's see, dash lighting already turned on, even though it got dark, see? Strange. Does this light work? That light works. Well, that's good. I don't know. Something strange is going on. I'll figure it out off camera. All right, let's turn on our GPS. We're not going to use GPS, though. We're going to use a VOR today. And this also got changed. Hmm. Let me see. What's this for? Okay. Anyway. And this GPS in this aircraft behaves how I'm used to it. If you noticed the previous video, if you recall, I was having a lot of issues with the GPS in the beach, which I have figured out now, but it behaves differently than in this, than in this aircraft. I thought this was just a X-plane GPS and then the plane makers would put it in, but it's responding differently to different aircraft, so I don't quite understand that. Anyway, the VR we're gonna use is 111.4. So we don't have to do much here to change that. Whoops, too much. 11.4, this is nav 1, which means your GPS is also nav 1, so it changed up there. I'm not going to do redundancy on nav 2 today. And we're not going to use ADF, although I'm going to put on ADF because I can. That's it, no autopilot. I'm just going to cruise around 4,000 feet towards the island. Um, our airport is at 1,601 feet, though. So it's not a big cliff on top of the island. Um, we are going to do this at inbound 202 degrees. So there is 80, 90, 200, 201, 202. All right, so we're going to take off 25 left, fly due south. How we connect with the VOR, just follow the VOR in until we pick up the runway visually. The VOR is south of the airport, but the airport is runway 22, which is, you know, what would that be? 10, 15 degrees off from the VOR. So we'll follow the VOR until we are ready to make our downwind or our final, I'm sorry, make our final onto runway 22. I'll show you how that works if I can execute it by the book, which probably won't happen because I'll be so busy talking and telling stories that I'll just forget what I'm doing. All right, so I think we're ready now to start this thing up. Doors are closed, radios are tuned. And the reason why in my checklist I have the radios tuned now is because people would be boarding, even though I already closed the doors on them. So why did I close the door so soon? I gotta think about that one. All right, let's see here. Power level, we're gonna come up here and reset everything. All right, let's see. 
We are going to move the fuel level forward. This is not mapped on my yoke for some reason, so I have to do that manually. Then we're going to come over here. And we're going to start up our engine on the left. We can come down here and watch it. As soon as we have prop rotation, we know we're good to go. And there it is. Now I am going to bring my props forward because on this aircraft, Feather has no sound. So we will lose all of our sound. So we'll keep props forward so we have something to listen to. And in the sake of time, we're going to start the other one. And again, come down here. And watch that thing spin up. Just like that. If you still don't believe me, there we go. Alright, what is next? Generators. Generators. Reset and then on. Reset and then on. Let's see if our lighting turned on yet back there. Still no lights. See, this is supposed to be bright white. Still no lights with this aircraft on X-Plane 11. Also, if you notice, if you recall, in the beach, the lights worked in the cabin, but they were different colors in X-Plane 11 than they were in X-Plane 10, the same version of aircraft. Sorry about my microphone. So this is the same version of aircraft in a different version of X-Plane, and the lights don't work at all in this one. So there must be something about that. Must be some relation there. All right, let's see. Generators on de-ice. We're not going to worry about tax light. can come on now. Paitaki can come on. Bleed airs can come on. And the rest of our lights are already on. And emergency is armed. Make sure all the warnings and cautions are out. And that's the center panel. Below the flaps, and they are. We have a very short taxi, so I'm going to bring flaps down to 10 so the wind doesn't grab us. And, um... Yeah, we're going to go on the runway. So, like usual, let's hop outside because it's more interesting, I think. Take out the parking brake and let's taxi over to 25 left. Also, my um, adjustments to the yoke sensitivity, or not yoke. Whoa, why is my thing going like that? What? What's that? I was not doing that. Anyway. The sensitivity to my paddles for my yaw control, for my rudder, is working out quite well with all aircraft so far, so I'm very happy about that. Hmm. Did a gust of wind mess with us there? It's quite possible. So anyway, we are going to taxi... Or not taxi. What? Why are my brakes moving my camera view? What in the world? Well, they're not now. Okay, whatever. We are in the threshold of runway 30. To get to the threshold of 25 left. And I would imagine our Boeing and Beechcraft friends have already taken off. Oh, what's this? Is that a fighter pilot? Let's stop a second here. Look at that! Sweet! Huh. That's AI aircraft, obviously, which I'm so excited it works in X-Plane 11 because I can never get it to work in X-Plane 10. I wonder where they're going. I don't really want to sit here, though, for 10 minutes and watch them taxi around. Unless he's going to take off there. No, nope, he's lost. All right, well, I don't want to wait 10 minutes to watch him, so... All right, let's set the parking brake here. Pop up here and turn off our taxi lights, turn off our cabin lights. Come over here and turn on our landing lights, which we'll leave on for the entire flight because they're not going very high. Flaps are set, parking brake is off, and let's get out of here. And I am being taken by wind or something just sitting on the ground. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is weird. I did a flight off camera in this aircraft. And everything is perfectly fine. So what in the heck is going on now? Huh. Anyway, get those flaps in right away. That was very strange. It just makes be really, really windy. Yeah, look at that. Crosswind. Oh my. It's just really windy. Windy and hazy. Let's have a few looks at the airport before I have to... Well, let's stop those wheels from spinning. There we go. 
let's have a look at this airport quickly before I get sucked into the ocean. You can barely see across the airport, that's awesome. I must say, of all my aircrafts, this aircraft in particular seems the most affected by wind. So anyway, um, there's Los Angeles there. And if you look over this way, and if you know where to look, you might be able to see the beacon for LAX, even in this fog. I don't know. Boy, I sure hope we can see our airport. I sure hope we'll be able to see our airport. Anyway, there are the shipyards. Long Beach, and here's the water canal. Going back to Los Angeles. Alright, let's hop inside and let's make ourselves turn. So that we can connect with the VOR before we get too far to the west. So like I said, the plan then is to follow the, v follow the VOR inbound until we see our runway. And then hopefully we should only need to turn to the right a few degrees to line up with the runway. Because the VOR is south of the runway, but with the angle of the airport of the runway itself. It should work out this way. The only thing I know about this airport is that um, there's a rule that says only full stop landings allowed. That's kind of cool to know. Let's see, we don't have any management to worry about. Any engine management to worry about. I better take my screenshot now before we can't see anything. So let's... There's Long Beach. Let's take a screenshot. Let's back up a bit. Let's take a screenshot episode or episode screenshot now. It is so hard to talk and do this at the same time. Man, oh man. The railway yard and shipyard are there. I actually drove down there when I visited Long Beach. And there's our island over there. All right, so story time, as promised. First of all, look at those reflections on that engine. That is new for X-Plane 11, and that's not a bad frame rate updating. That's just the speed that the reflections are updating. That's not my frame rate. Oh, wait, let's take that as a screenshot, see if that'll work. I take a bunch of screenshots and choose one. All right, so story time. Long Beach Airport. I flew into Long Beach about 12 years ago because my wife was going to a conference. She's an English professor. And before children, whenever she would go to a conference, I'd go with her. So she would go to the conference for two or three days, and I would take those two or three days alone, and I would just do stuff, whatever I wanted. And then after the conference, we would extend our vacation, and then we would do vacation stuff. But for this conference, we landed in Long Beach. I can't remember if it was an Airbus 321 or something, but it wasn't... It wasn't a small commercial jet. It was a good-sized commercial jet. And the runways at Long Beach are so short that when we landed, as soon as those wheels touched down, we were, like, flung forward into our seats because we had to break so quickly. And the lady next to me said, I fly here all the time. I hate this airport. The runways are so short. And I didn't really know much about airplanes then. I was doing flight simulator, but I was just screwing around doing acrobatics in the 747. That was how I did flight simulator back then. So I didn't know a whole lot about it. I'm just like, okay, sure, whatever. And then after the conference, we take off, or after our vacation, we take off. But this is how we took off. We were still on the taxiway, perpendicular to the runway. And the pilot revs up the engines. And we start rolling, and we start getting speed. And then he turns on to the runway, and then we take off. And even with that head start, as soon as the vibrations were gone, meaning you left the ground, right there was the end of the runway within two seconds. It was insane. So no margin for error, and we had to spool up on the taxiway. I thought it was so cool. And even though I wasn't really into airplanes at that time, I understood what was going on. And I really, really enjoyed it. I've never experienced that at any other airport. The only thing I can think of is maybe we were heavy, like at our max weight or something, because there was no room for air. There was no margin there. But it was so fun. All right, we're at 5,000 feet, so we're going to trim down and level off. I plan to go 4,000, 
thought I was talking too much, like usual. So let's trim down. We're still waiting to connect with her VOR. That needle's been moving. So we're getting there slowly. Um, so let's see what else here. We're going to leave the landing lights on. Let's have another look outside briefly. Get a screenshot there. And there's looking back. So there's LAX off the wing. Long Beach behind us. And the mountains over there. I cannot remember the name of those mountain ranges. Santa Monica over there. And Catalina Island. I don't quite have the runway in sight yet. But it's on that cliff. It's be well, it's because we're pretty much perpendicular, almost perpendicular to the runway, so we're not going to see it yet. I've never been to Catalina Island, I think I said that already. I don't know anything about it. I would imagine it's incredibly beautiful in real life, and I'm not watching my altitude, and I'm already 2,000 feet above what I'd planned, but we're flying VFR anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Let's just trim down here. I don't want to bring in the throttles because I don't want to slow down. I just want to come down a little bit while we're keeping our speed up. Alright, we're about to connect with our VOR. So we'll start our turn. And actually let the nose come down a little bit on purpose. And we'll roll out. There we go. And keep our nose down a little bit. There we go, and I, th I imagine we're going to have to track, or we have to do our heading to the right a little bit to stay on that VOR because of the wind. There we go, and our alt at attitude is all over the place, or our VSI is all over the place. I still don't see the runway yet, even though I know it's there. I can't, yeah, I do. I don't see the pappy, but I see the runway. Right off the nose, angling off to the right. So we'll just stay on with this VOR until we are ready to dogleg to the right. So anyway, that's my short story about Long Beach Airport, the landing and takeoff. I'm sorry I don't remember what plane it was. I assume it was an Airbus, but it could have been a Boeing 737 for all I know. I have no idea. But usually when we fly a Delta out of Minneapolis, it's usually an Airbus. So Anyway, ooh, wind's picking up. See that? That's awesome. I love it. I love the wind. Fun to fly in the wind. So now we do have to come down regardless because we got to get down to 1,600 feet and we're at 6,220 feet but I'm keeping our speed up all the way what else can I say about Los Angeles the driving was insane I've driven Chicago many 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 times I've driven Minneapolis to me Minneapolis and Chicago are pretty much the same. It just takes longer to get through Chicago, but same driving style, same congestion. It's just more of it. Where Los Angeles was scary, even for me. And because you sit in the right lane like an obedient citizen, and people still get mad at you, even though it's bumper to bumper traffic, which I didn't quite get that, but whatever. And all these Escalade SUVs being chased by Ferraris all flashing lights at each other because 100 miles an hour of the speed limit isn't enough. I'm slightly exaggerating, but you get the idea. Switchbacks in the mountains with mirrors around the corners. You can see who's coming, but people still would fly around those corners in their SUVs so fast that they were always on my side of the road. And, um... If you go through a yellow light, oncoming traffic who's trying to turn will honk at you because they wanted to go through before it turned red. But then if you stop at a red light, people honk at you because they wanted to go three or four through the red light. So you just can't win. Plus, I was in this teeny tiny rental Dodge Neon. So there we have the runway in sight, and I see the pappies. And this is working out perfectly. We got blown south of the VOR, but that's okay, because if you look at the gauge, if I were to be over to the right, we'd have a very, very short final. Since I know where this airport is, I went visual a little early. 
there are no instrument approaches. It's just I found the VOR nearby and I looked at the angles and I calculated what I would need to see the runway while following the VOR and then land on the runway. So we're going to make our turn on a final pretty soon. It's going to be a long final. I do have to draw back my throttle because we're not coming down fast enough. Landing lights are still on. Flaps will bring out to 10 degrees at the last minute. It's now just a matter of coming down at a comfortable descent. But not slowing down too much. So what do we do in LA? My wife was at the conference. I just drove around for three days. Drove to the shipyards, drove in the mountains. I wanted to drive into Burbank, but I didn't make it that far. Um, the freeway interchanges were stressful not knowing the area, but that's true anywhere. It's just you're doing that at a high rate of speed. Speed limit is 65 in the city, and it was congested, and people were still doing 65, two feet from the car in front of them. I do know when they have accidents there, they are good. They are good. Um, what else? We walked down Hollywood Boulevard, Santa Monica Boulevard, all the touristy stuff. We went to Long Beach, and, oh yeah, this is kind of a big thing. I was there the three or four days we were there. It was rainy and 62 degrees the whole time in the summer. Early summer? Anyway, it was hilarious. So my only time being in California, it was raining and 62 degrees. So I went to the beach, because I'd never been to a beach on the Pacific. And I was the only person there. I had the beach to myself. Except one woman came out of a condo along the beach in this, like, full coverage. It wasn't a wetsuit. It was a swimsuit, but it was, you know, very conservative. And she went swimming. And she came out, like, 20 minutes later, walked back into her condo, and that was it. So I was kind of disappointed. I wanted my first Pacific Beach experience to be a little better than that, but... So be it. I should be back there someday. It feels like we're not even moving. But we are, and this wind is just being difficult. We'll increase our speed while we still continue at our descent rate. why did my sim freeze? That made me very nervous. I really have to go through my computer and thin it out. It's been a couple years since I've gone through and removed unnecessary things and um, killed some startup processes. I better do that because I was really, really, really enjoying my increased performance in X-Plane 11, but that has somewhat changed in the past couple weeks. Wow, look at that wind. This is going to be a very interesting landing. We are, the wind is perpendicular to us, by the way. Only about 24 knots, but it's perpendicular. Also, landing on a cliff is very difficult because it feels like we're way too high. But if you look at the Pappy, they were red until just now. So we were actually too low. Cliffs are very difficult because you end up going too low, but then if you compensate, and go higher then it's easy to go too high so it's really difficult to land at least this is a couple hundred yards in from the cliff all right we're going to slow down now we're coming in pretty fast so once we're over this cliff edge the cliff face it'll be easy to tell where we are but i thought i was right on and then the pappies kicked in and we were way too low so that's how it works still coming in hot but that's okay as soon as i let all those flaps we'll bleed off speed like crazy Gear's already down because it's fixed gear. And 10 degree flaps. We will float, but we'll also slow down. There we go. I think I'm going to go 20 just to slow us down. That was a terrible approach. We have plenty of runway. We shouldn't have to go missed. And I can't tell how high we are in this aircraft. It's been a while. Shouldn't we be down right now? There we go. There we go. Brakes, reversers, and stop on a dime. Flaps in so the wind doesn't catch us. There we go. Not bad. Whenever I land in the Cessna 152, 
I always float because I think I'm going to touch down, but I have a long ways to go yet. And then I smash down. And then this aircraft is the opposite. So every aircraft is different in terms of perspective, how high you, how high you are from the runway. So I see we have a model at airport, which I knew, but we have Autogen on our airport. You see that gas station and some houses? The reason for that is because this was made, probably made in a version of WED prior to exclusion zones. My left rudder isn't working. Weird. It also looks like that the rudder is backwards. Huh, something's going on with this airplane. I don't know if there's a planned update for x 11 or not, but it's definitely glitchy. But fortunately, I have just enough experience to compensate for it, I guess. Alright, let's start our parking brake. Kill throttle and the props, and as I was saying, the new versions of WED, you can put exclusion zones, so every time Autogen is updated, it doesn't pop into your airport. So when the person made this, there wasn't Autogen there, so it's not their fault. And there wasn't a version of WED that allowed exclusion zones at the time. Alright, let's go up here and I should have turned my taxi lights on and my landing lights off, but I didn't have a co-pilot to help me with that. So we'll do it that way and let's see if I can get my lights to turn on this time. I'm not feeling hopeful. Nope, still no lights. Oh well. Everybody watch your head. Let's see, we'll keep everything on because we would be doing a return flight back to the island anyway. So we'll just leave everything the way it is. And let's hop outside. I guess I can turn some of my flashing lights off, but that will take off again soon. Alright, let's see here. My arrows are slow. I gotta speed those up. Let's zoom out a tad so we can look at everything. There we go. Right on the top of a plateau. How nice is that? Take a screenshot of that too, just in case. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed the flight. It was a quick one. It was only about a 16-minute flight time as planned. We got some good wind action and some haze to deal with. That was fun. If you found me by accident, please subscribe. If you are a regular subscriber, thank you for your continuing support. If you have any suggestions for flights, leave them in the comments. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.